Hello, welcome to another video. We have an integration problem here with imaginary, with a complex expression because e is raised to i to the x and we've got to integrate. But you see, do not keep watching if you can give this a shot. So you can stop this video now or pause the video and give it a shot. And many problems usually are easier than you think they are. So give it a try and whatever you get, come back and see what I do because this is actually going to take a very short time. Let's get into it. So because I know the characteristic of i, that i is the square root of negative 1, it's a constant, it's a number, it's not a variable. So I'm going to do the usual integration, assuming that i, I will treat i as if it was a 3 or a 5 or a negative 1, whatever I want it to be. Okay, so if I do this integration, see what's going to happen. This is going to be equal to... If I integrate e to the i x, remember usually you just get the same answer, right? But you're going to divide, so it's going to be e to the i x, but we'll be dividing by this number, we'll say 1 over i. And then we're going to evaluate from 0 to pi. That's all the integration you need to do if you treat i as a constant, which it is. However, we don't want to write i as a denominator, and usually we do what we call rationalization. You multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. So what I'm going to do is, I'll say this is equal to i over i times 1 over i. So this is rationalization of imaginary uh, fractions, okay? And then I'm going to have, so I'm going to do this to this, and I still have e to the i x evaluated from 0 to pi. So what do I get here? Well, I'm going to get i, and under, I'm going to get i times i, which is i squared. And remember, i squared is the square of the square root of negative 1. So this is negative 1, and I have e to the i x evaluated from 0 to pi. Now, this is just negative i e to the i x evaluated from 0 to to pi. So all I have to do is plug in pi for x and plug in 0 for x and then I get my answers. And what would that be? Well, this is going to be equal to minus i. Let's evaluate. If we plug in pi here, we're going to end up with, so what I'm doing is, because this is a constant, I can actually cut this out. So this is all I'm evaluating because this remains the same. And then I'm going to have um, e to the i pi minus e to the 0 pi, I mean 0, i is times 0, which is 0. And what do I get? Oh, remember Euler's identity. Again, Euler's identity, what does it say? Okay, let's just write it here says e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0, which implies that e to the i pi is equal to minus 1. So this expression here is minus 1. So we can say this is equal to, let's write it here. So we can say that this is equal to minus i times this is minus 1, minus, what is e to the 0? It's just 1. So, what does this give us? This gives us a negative i multiplied by negative 2. Well, this gives me, negative times negative becomes positive. This is 2i. Well, this is the answer I will get if I just straight up do integration on what I have. But there's another way, okay, which I think might be the easier way. Okay, sorry that I showed you the hard way first before the easy way. Now, what about this? Look at this expression. You see, um, let's say alternative.
Okay, the alternative method will still be using Euler's equation. And what we're gonna say is that the integral from zero to pi of e to the ix dx can be written as the integral from zero to pi. And instead of writing this, this way, we write it using Euler's equation, which says this expression can be written simply as cosine x plus i sine x, and then dx. You see that? Now I know how to integrate cosine x. Okay, if I integrate cosine x, what do I get? I get sine x. And if I integrate i sine x, well, this is a constant, it's just gonna be plus i times if I integrate sine x, I'm going to get negative cosine x. And that's it. But I need to evaluate from 0 to pi. Okay, let's do that. Well, let's plug in pi first. If I plug in pi, it's going to be sine pi, sine pi, plus i times negative cosine pi. Okay, that's the first part minus, it's going to be sine 0 plus i times negative cosine 0. Okay, let's get the numbers out. What is sine pi? It's 0. So we got 0 plus, what is cosine pi? Cosine pi is negative 1, so negative cosine pi will be just 1, which makes 1 times i is just i. Ah minus, we go here, what is sine 0? It's 0. Plus i times what is cosine 0? Cosine 0 is 1, so negative cosine 0 is the same thing as negative 1, so negative 1 times i is negative i. Negative 1 times i is negative i, so we have negative 1 in here. Okay, so what we have here basically is just i minus 0 plus Negative i is just negative i. Well, it's going to be i plus i. And that gives us 2i. So you could go this path, take this path and get this answer, which I find to be the easier way. Or you could brute force it right from the beginning and then you get your manipulation using Euler's identity. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.